to focus uh, the board and the people on that very important budget issue and the override uh, and getting that passed to uh, take care of that, that item. Uh, that being said, um, I don't know how much time, uh, well actually the red line coffee, I know that was there today, so you didn't have much time over the weekend or any time to, to really digest that and look at that. Um, but it is um, an item, I guess, that we need, uh, I don't guess, I know that we need to, uh, to work on uh, sooner rather than later. Um, because moving ahead, uh, Again, no matter who sits uh, at this table in May, uh, who sits in uh, the town administrator's office uh, in May or June or moving forward, uh, I don't want to hand off the pile of crap that we have before us now to the next individual. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I think the board responsibility um, to itself and to the townspeople um, to get it as clean and open and transparent as possible um, it may seem I know it seems like you know there's so many things and you know uh, that aren't getting done or you know you're moving slow or this or that on there it's just uh, it seems like I don't know I don't know, maybe we're cursed. Uh, that it's just, you know, these big things keep just popping out every time it seems like we're turning a corner and everything is gonna go well, it just, something else pops its head up. Uh, some of that may be, you know, left over. Uh, some of it may be built, has been building and it's now just coming out of the bag. Uh, but again, uh, we're sitting at the table. Uh, I was the voted uh, leader, if you will, of this board. Uh, so uh, it is on me. And I serve at the, uh, at the will of the people and it's their privilege to throw me out the door at any time if they wish, uh, if they think uh, that will solve any issues. So we have, uh, we have this red line copy. Uh, it can be electronic. <coughs> if you have it in the office, if you don't, I can send it and we, I'll send it to the office again if you don't have it uh, and send it to the other board members um, along, with the, uh, along with the job, the job description things. Um, <coughs> so we can have time. <coughs> I foresee, Mr. Robinson's thing that we probably probably will be seeing you again before next year, but uh, <laughs> in this meeting uh, for probably a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, I start uh, I'm going to start looking over these sample things and, and start drawing in uh, language for the job description change for the town coordinator administrator uh, as well as the responsibilities and procedures for the board, uh, which does um, instruct us, which will, when it's finally done and said and voted on, it can be out there for the people to see um, the guidelines that the board has created for itself, uh, for the town administrator, which I think it will be clearly, things will be clearly defined, um, and then the people will have something in their hands and say, hey, are you doing this, that, or everything. I think that's uh, is something uh, the board has been working on since, probably since I was elected. Uh, I know it had been tried, but the majority, the, the, it just didn't seem it was the direction the board had wanted to go for whatever reason. Uh, I think it, that's actually probably not a fair statement. I think there were a couple members who had tried, but just the majority of the board uh, did not want to go in that direction. Uh, there's certainly been uh, a selectman or two uh, over the 
over the years that have tried, but just uh, for whatever reason, the majority at the time just didn't want to go that way. Uh, and I know it's been uh, trying to work in that direction, and we have been, I believe, a whole lot more open, and things have came out, uh, good or bad, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but I, th I, I think overall, the, the knowledge of uh, and what's available to the people. Certainly, I think the, the new website aids in that uh, and will continue uh, to improve and, and uh, let people know what is going on and why and how. So, yes. May I have a moment? You may. Thank you. Let me speak professionally. The town of Templeton needs a town administrator. The state recognized that in 2009 when they wrote a report. Towns adjacent to us have town administrator forms of municipal governance. There is no mystery to it. You have a bylaw that the town meeting has voted and the attorney general has approved. Through that bylaw, you can specifically describe the duties and the authority that the Templeton Town Administrator would have. You may abstract and retain the specific duties that you feel have to stay with the Board of Selectmen. So you can craft a specific job for this town which has specific needs. That is the way it works and I would strongly advise you to go in that direction. Now, people in Templeton know that I am under consideration for a position in another town. It may come to fruition. We are in the process of negotiating. It may not. I might stay in Templeton. I might move on. That is not a material fact for this town or your board. The material fact is that you really need to give day-to-day -day <coughs> operating authority to someone who has the skill and the ability to act on your behalf, the wisdom to know when they should bring it to the board, and to relieve this board of all the relatively small issues that I have seen the board deal with over my time here, like whether we should or should not replace a water circulating pump in a heating system in a town building. I will forever remember the 45 minute debate over that $257 procurement, which should never have been before the board in the first place. So um, I think there is ample opportunity for the board to craft that position, to do it well. And in a back of the envelope survey that I have done of towns near Templeton, adjacent towns, which have town administrators not town coordinators, not administrative assistants, but fully fledged administrators with authority, you will be surprised, or maybe not, to find out that the pay ranges for those individuals is in the mid $70,000 range. So you don't have to pay a whole lot more money to have someone who's eminently qualified and very skilled at this position. And as you know, that's not out of reach of what you're paying me right now. So. Uh, please, regardless of my decision, whether I stay or move on, please pursue this in the interests of the citizens of Thank you. Yes. I just want to say, which I said on Friday, but just for anyone who wasn't there, I, for me personally, the biggest issue um, that can be resolved by having a town administrator, where there's actually two. One is that there is no person that is in charge in, in any corporate structure, you have someone that can basically tell you. I mean, even a CEO of a corporation has a board of directors that can tell them, we don't like what you're doing. There is no one besides the board of selectmen assembled that if there's an employee with a, a problem with an employee or a department head, and not necessarily they're behaving poorly, but just even to set what their guidelines and priorities should be, um, there is no we cannot do that except as a board assembled. So if we meet, um, even if it's weekly, which we have been doing lately, even if it's uh, for good cause, but even if it is weekly that we're meeting, it would be like having a job where your boss only ever directs you 
once a week, and that's even if you're on the agenda. So, you know, if there's problems going on and they're not brought to our attention, problems can, they just continue until we're suddenly in this problem, you know, this like, just using the budget situation, and I'm not pointing the finger at any particular employee, but I'm just saying that, you know, we're shocked to know these things are going on, and then when you start questioning people, it's like, oh, well, actually, this is, this, there's been this problem and this problem, and it's, it's been serious, and this has been going on, and this has been going on, but, you know, it's really no one's place to kind of, play supervisor and I think by having a town administrator we can have someone whose job it is to be supervisor and then also when there is a problem there is somewhere for the buck to stop I mean as Jeff said ultimately the buck stops with the board but that doesn't always so practically solve matters by having one point of contact that we can say so please tell us what is going on with the accountant the treasurer this department that department you know council on aging without necessarily hearing from employees whose it's in their interest to say that things are good. And I'm not, again, not pointing the finger at anyone, but obviously it's in any employee's interest to say that things are going well in their department. So by having someone who can ultimately be responsible, knowing that they'll be the one that will be pulled in front of the board if things go wrong, that they will have the incentive to stay on top of things and make sure that things function smoothly for the taxpayers. So that's why I believe that a town administrator is a very important thing for Templeton to have. Thank you. And if I can just add, I'd like, you know, this is long overdue. We do need, you know, we're not a town like in the 1930s anymore. You know, we don't have, we've got to have people here on a day-to-day -day basis that can watch what's going on. Um, and I would like to see us move forward with this, you know, not, you know, uncontrollably fast because we do need to craft it well. But I don't want to see us here in February still talking about this. I mean, I think we should either be prepared to be ready for having a meeting on the 30th and doing it then or certainly no later than our first meeting in january and if we can get these copies electronically that gives us then the ability to you know do some analysis put together some recommendations and get back together i, I know the red line is electronic um, yeah. as i said the, the original draft <coughs> i it was made uh, i sent it in should be there, and if there's not, I, I can pull the electronic copy out. So that could be a Christmas time assignment. I could see, you know, thing to do. Yeah, because uh, realistically, we probably would be here. Yeah. I mean, not just for the hotel, but probably for a couple of things. Uh, maybe. All right, any, well, you're a dedicated group. And I, I really appreciate it, but, yes. I, I think that having a job, having a town administrator will make huge difference in the way the town runs and is the people that will be accountable to one person. And it, it will take for all of the, as Jeff said, small stuff that takes up your valuable time so that when big things come, little stuff gets pushed away, or sometimes little stuff pushes away the big things that need to be taken care of. But I can only say one thing. I, in my heart, do not feel that there was any way that you people sitting at that board right now would ever have known the nightmare that we were going to find spent time going through those files because I think he was ready to run down the road. There's no way you guys would have known that. Absolutely none. And I don't think you should take the hit for it. You're the cleanup committee. You are cleaning up after years of dysfunction. And you've got a chance to make things right. Oh, redo the whole town. Much. And it'll, it'll be so much easier. All right. Not your fault, though. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, where everybody's done with agreement, we'll work on this. Yeah. On the 30th. Put it in my calendar. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah, I'll go home and serve it. Put it in. Put it in. I'll be here, too. Who's buying the champagne?
Hey, 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 hey. We could, can we, we could change our meetings to uh, JK Crossroads, the Agricultural yeah. Commission does it. I'm going to make that. I'm going to make <laughs> All right, the next, uh, the next item on the agenda is an appointment um, for the Templeton Elementary School Building Committee. Uh, uh, Chris Stewart uh, would expire in 2014, June 30th, I am assuming. Okay. I'll make a motion to appoint Chris Stewart to the Elementary School Building Committee until June 30th, 2014. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. Julie? Yes. Doug? Yes. Ken? Yes. And yes. All right. The next item on the agenda are bylaws on the Council of the Aging uh, Town of Templeton. And let's see, we have just easier to read. Yellow is where the changes occurred. Everybody, uh, a minute to Have all been approved? Yes. Okay. So, Bethany, your, uh, your board has uh, looked at these and voted on them? Yes. Uh, I believe you should have a, the yellow copy is just <coughs> the copy that signifies what the changes, changes were. And then the other copy is the new bylaws signed unanimously by the current COA board. And other than the first page, uh, well, you've changed some words, like uh, looks like the, the town of Templeton, uh, you on, like you corrected maybe some omissions. Uh, it's, uh, a change or a correction to support the Templeton Food Pantry and its efforts to serve the needs of the community. Uh, That's an addition. addition. That's an addition, yeah. Uh, would you like to speak on the, the, um, just what the addition was or what just the, the correction was? The um, corrections were a few. Most of them, as you've noted, were just grammatical errors that were being corrected. Uh, but the bylaws were changed so that they specifically include the food pantry, which the COA has been overseeing for a number of years anyway. Uh, it changes the board structure from nine to seven to nine as a range. And it talks more specifically about the um, who's eligible to be a board member and how long they must be an associate member before they can be a board member. Those are pretty much the basic. And then the, the senior center, the single words were just grammatical correction. Yes, we're just grammatical correction. And then, of course, the addition of, you know, talking about the food pantry, who's eligible for the food pantry, who's eligible for the senior center, and so on. Uh, Doug? 
Um, just a couple of questions. The, the part of consists of seven to nine members. That variable figure, I think, could be potential, potential issues. So I'm not, I don't think that's a good idea. It should be a specific number, seven or nine, not seven to nine. Um, and then I would also question why would we need COA employees may serve as associate members. Why would an employee need to be even an associate member of the, of the uh, board? If the board wants to talk to employees, they should come there you know, anyway. We have employees that are associate members already. And so um, they're almost like grandfathering them in at the moment. Associate members have no voting rights whatsoever. Um, it is just near coming to the meetings, being provided with the same information that the board members are provided with, and having the option of being able to support through volunteerism, and which they could do anyway. Um, seven to nine, the board is currently, uh, actually they have, a, they have a vacancy, there are six members at the moment. There is a vacancy, it should be seven, but the board was actually recently increased to nine, they couldn't get nine, they were gonna drop it back down to seven. I don't wanna see them drop it back down to seven. I wanna see them fill those positions. I know that there are members in the community that care enough and wanna hold those positions. So this was kind of like a compromise. They felt that if the paper said nine and they didn't have nine, they were doing something wrong when there really can be vacancies and there's nothing wrong with that. I, can, I agree that it'd be better to have that concrete number but Right, because there's a number of boards in town, virtually probably almost all boards in towns have a vacancy. Um, so that's not an issue. Um, most every board that we've had in town that's been nine has at some point come and asked to be reduced to seven because they could never fill nine seats. So, I mean, I, I think you should recommend back to the board that they make it seven. The issue is quorum requirements depending on whatever that number is. And it does say that in here. The quorum requirements then have a range just like the board has a range. So they did try to adjust that in more than one. You know, everywhere that it affects, they did try to adjust that. You can understand, uh, they're from a time period when what's on paper is what's supposed to be done. And what is wrong with that? Nothing. <laughs> Um, my one question I had is about spouses not being able to serve as full uh, board members simultaneously. Um, kind of using someone's marital status in order to limit their ability to serve in the community. I just don't, I mean it's one thing, if, right, it's one thing if, if you have a spouse, if you know, if the you were married to one of the board members, that's different right, because right. there's a, a, a employer-employee relationship there. But for two individuals to be on the board, I mean, is it like first come, first serve? What if they both? It seems to naturally have worked itself out. And uh, we have several um, married couples where one's a board member and one's an associate. And it's very clear who wants to be the voting member and who's just, just coming along because they're a team. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but um, it, it's never been a problem where multiple, not at least in my case, there's not been a problem where uh, two married people want to be on the board together. I guess like what's, what is the rationale thinking that they're going to think so similarly as to? I think that is the rationale. Again, I'm not a voting member of the board. I did uh, sit when the uh, committee did go over these bylaws and I could give recommendations, but I'm not a voting member of the board. I'm, I'm their employee, so right. this, this is their decision, but I can't ask them to be their attorney. All right. I just think, uh, I agree with Ken, that I think uh, disallowing somebody based on a marital status is asking for trouble. Intent, and I, intent is fine, mm -hmm. but what's that saying? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. I think excluding someone based on, I think that falls under one of them things about equal opportunity, <laughs> Mr. Attorney. I am oh, wait, you're not that kind of lawyer. You're not that kind of lawyer. <laughs> if you guys want to write up your recommendations, they'll go right back to the board and their meeting, their next meeting will be the first Thursday in January. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I would just eliminate that. Kirk and then Diane. Can I just follow up with Doug said? I would just simply just make it up to nine members. Take the seven out. Just up to nine. You have to have the seven, you have to have five for that matter. It's just up to nine people. What? It doesn't say you can't go down in membership. You just went up to nine. It puts a cap on it. It's a relief to seven to nine. Just go up to nine. The so planning board used to be a larger number. Oh, and used to be, I think, 11 years but ago. But it's so hard to get people to come. Seven now, and it's just like, it's, it's good because you have a quorum, you only need, you know, you only need four, uh, if you actually have a yeah. quorum. And there's trouble with large number uh, membership boards. So after the first couple months since fall apart, yeah. no one shows up, it's pretty bad when you get 10 people in the room, you still have a quorum. So actually the lower numbers are encouraged always, but I'm not saying, it may be the nine people board, but Right. If you you know seven, four is a quorum for seven, nine, nine is five. Is five. five. Yeah. And what do you do if eight shows up? You're still you have a quorum, you but have to, you have you know, to have a majority, thing. you know, of the vote. So, so you know, a tie vote technically doesn't pass. It, yeah. it didn't want the majority. But uh, but yeah, I know it's like it's with large number of committees. Yeah. And last, last time I knew there seven was like eighty-seven. Nine. Yeah. Last time I. Yeah. Last I knew, there were like 80, I think it was 87 committees, and there's always a list of, of vacancies, and large number of boards have always been hard to fill. It's a lot, like Doug said, a lot of boards have ratcheted back their membership just due to the fact they can't find, because as you said, it starts out, everybody's on fire, they show up, and three months into it, I, I got this, I got that. The reason going through that first hand from people I've talked to, they haven't been at a meeting in months because they have like a 12, 15 member board. Yeah. Uh, they have half the room people show up and you don't have a quorum. Yeah. You show up for meetings and it's like, well, we don't have right. a quorum, so we'll just talk so about. So that's just be giving some thought to what you know, we'll just say. Just, it has to be so many. Yeah. The lower number is better. So. Diane. Right, but I mean, I you know, excluding the legal ramifications. <laughs> you know, it's just, I just don't want, I, I hate to see a situation get created that doesn't need to be. Enough stuff jumps out of the woodwork and bites us in the, you know, in the backside. Uh, creating a, one that can do that is just, uh, I just, I just hate to see that situation get created. Bethany. Um, yeah, also, the range was they wanted to make it clear that there was a minimum that they were shooting for. And um, again, with keeping with the nine, people don't know that only 50% of the board, I'm sorry, 51% of the board needs to be 50 and above. The other positions can be uh, held by anybody at, at any age. And so we needed some time to educate and uh, get the word out that we might be able to fill those positions with interested community members who just might not be 50 yet. Okay. Uh, my feeling is the, the, the one line is spouse is not able to serve. Yeah. I just think that's a trap right, door I agree, I think. to follow. Yeah. yeah. But uh, could you perhaps maybe say only one household member? Unless household can be discrimination as well as spouse or what household well, would be? Well, you're not using an example of you know, items that are typically named as, you know, race, religion, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I can't recite them all, but I got a good, uh, but, you know, he's specifically saying, you know, you may or you can't, and, and I just think, I don't know if anyone would ever go there, you know, with the senior center, the council on the aging, however. You don't want to open the door. Right. When just saying as as they're um, 
the positions are filled by the membership. So if the membership decides that they don't want to put two people on that are married, they can decide how to vote with that in mind without it necessarily being a part of, of the, the official in, you know, in writing bylaws as well. Is the recommendation household or is the recommendation just erasing that line completely? I would say erase the line yes, completely. But, yeah. but that's I, I just think okay. we're, you, you know, I just don't want to see the council agent or any of the town in general, you know, setting the trap order right. to follow it. I do think, though, still the amb ambiguity of oh. seven to nine is, is a problem. I think it okay. needs to be a number. I agree. May I ask a favor? Would you give the recommendation and the letter that I can present to the board? And uh, in that letter, you can make it clear that it's all right to have a board with open vacancy. Sure. Um, we can do that. That's that's. It's got to be nine. It's got to be five. It's got to be one number. No, that's no, that's no problem at all. Um, I mean, this was an issue that even came up in my interview. That's why. That's why I know it's something that they've been stuck on. Okay. Um, now I understand these things. I would entertain a motion to to have them send that letter uh, recommending uh, remove the spouses completely and one number. Uh, Board membership. Uh, Janet to sign? Yes. Sure, sure, why not? I so moved. Throw things right here. I want to switch name plates next time. Uh, all right, motion made and seconded. Uh, Julius? Yes. Doug? Yes. Ken? Yes. And yes. And I'll be, I'll be in tomorrow to write that letter. To sign that. To write that letter. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, we're delegating this authority. Okay. I need to do that. We're done with that. Uh, an announcement. Uh, the sewer. Commission chairman is here and they are having uh, a meeting. So, would you care to speak a couple words on that? I don't want to mix up the date and, and what? All we're going to do is talk about the possible way to open meeting or the normal meeting, just out of our agenda. If there's any questions, So you're having a meeting to discuss the possible rate he heights, and the, when will that be? January 6th, that's the first one. January 6th, 2014, at 4.30, at the sewer department. Correct. I'm reciting this so, because uh, I don't know if you'll get picked up back there. But that will be an open public meeting, and if people yep. want to have any say so, or hear, uh, of any possible rate increases of your sewer bill, you're smart to go to that meeting and let you, the sewer commissioners, know how you feel, or at least get the information. The first meeting, November, one person showed up, six months. The last time, eight showed up before four or more sewer users. Not okay with the four. And we, we did, yes. you know, we did do the announcement to let people know. We're looking for a 1400 to show up. Well, 
suggest maybe changing the meeting place. I, even if I lived here, I wouldn't know where the sewer department is and how to find it. Or depend so, how the wind is blowing. Here, uh, the 690 Patriots Row, I don't know, some other place where you might get a bigger audience. Well, we could have a written meeting at a different place. Let's start right on the meeting and just get information. If anybody wants to know, they can call and voice their concerns. And we just got to see what, because we have our meeting. But I understand what you're trying to do. If you if you care about your sewer rates or you want to know, you know, if they're going up, what that might be, uh, you should attend that meeting um, in January at 4:30 at the sewer department. And if you don't show up, well, then don't complain about whatever your rates may or may not be, because you had an opportunity to have input. Unfortunately, that happens more often than not <coughs> in all things, including town meeting. All right. Now, the wonderful selectmen's comments. Does anyone have anything? I just have, um, there's going to be a hearing on um, live bait trapping in West Boylston at 1 o'clock tomorrow at the Division of Fisheries and Game. One o'clock. Hmm. All righty. Um, no, nothing real big. Cookie sale was uh, good for the Council on Aging. Appreciate everybody who, uh, you know, uh, donated or participated. All right. Ken? Um, nothing, just everyone have a safe holiday and. Um, be careful traveling on the snowy roads. Uh, I have one thing. Uh, it will be short and sweet, but I just happen to think it's kind of important because it kind of rubbed me. Well, I don't know. Uh, there was a letter to the editor in the Gardner News. It was on page six. It was Thursday, December 12th. And it was written by the general manager of the Templin uh, Light and Water Plant, John Driscoll. And in it, one of the things he talked about was one town official has stated that the average yearly water bill in Templeton is $800. This is certainly news to the water commissioners and to the general manager who regularly exchange information on quarterly water sales. There was a water rate study done. Uh, it was hired by Templeton Light, paid for by them. And they had uh, an engineering company uh, tie and bond do it. That same company, tie and bond, in 2012 produced the Massachusetts water rate survey. It has Templeton Municipal Light and Water, annual cost $801. The water rate is $8.90 per thousand gallons, billing cycle quarterly. Primary water source type, groundwater. Separate business rate, no. Seasonal rate, no. Elderly discounts, no. Low income discounts, no. Early payment discounts, no. And the population served, uh, 7,479 people. That's in the town, that's not uh, the rate payers. Last rate change, 2012. A connection fee of $2,937. An inspection fee of $50 and the irrigation rate is $8.33 per 1,000 gallons. So if this $800 figure is news to Mr. Driscoll and the commission, I would suggest that he should probably perhaps read or talk to the firm that they hire to do a water rate study. Because, or well, maybe they should look up with the information that Ty and Bond puts out. Uh, this did come off the web. Not everything is correct that you read on the web, just like everything is not always accurate that you read in the newspaper. But I just find it ironic that the company that they hired 
to do their water rate study states in a 2012 survey of all water companies in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and they list the average cost of $800 and Mr. Driscoll says it's not $800 and that's news to him. I find uh, a little, I don't know, odd. Especially when he's telling a town, saying that a town official, whoever that might have been, I know I made a comment on it, I know a couple others did, uh, that you know we're basically putting out false information. It's information that was put out, published by the same uh, company that they hired to do their water rate study. Maybe they should talk with that company a little more often before making a statement like that, which I think just confuses people more uh, than it does any good. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, it's supposed to snow tomorrow, so be careful out there. Mr. Chairman, just, would you mind if I just made a couple of comments about the Jeff Cross Festival? Sure. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who came, and I thought it was a great success, and thank you to the board um, for approving that, and the chief, and the um, chief of police, and Alan Mayo. I mean, I think every department was involved in putting that together and pulling it together. I think a lot of people came. I think that. Um, Tree lighting mostly happened on the common, but it was nice to see uh, all the other selectmen come. I've never done all of them, so I hope that um, we are going to have a meeting to kind of like debrief about the things that went wrong. There wasn't a lot, but you just kind of learn from trying to put something together so quickly. But it was really um, nice to see the town come together. And the high school band was so excited um, about doing that. So I just wanted to say thank you to the town and thank you to the board. Thank you. And Jack Frost here looks yes, quite dapper. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I would entertain a motion to so moved. second. <laughs> motion made seconded. No talk about that one. Yes. Julie? Yes. Doug? Yes. Okay. yes. And yes. Thank you all for coming and thank you for staying uh, and listening to my long interview. So.